Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Li Hao. Hello. So we will start uh, right away. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. This. Sorry about that. So mm. my camera didn't seem to want to work mm. today. Yeah, my video is kind of weird. I don't, I don't know why. Uh, let me see. You're invisible. Yeah, but you, you see, yeah, for my view, you know, my face, my body doesn't look yeah, right. It looks like you are using the virtual background. Yeah. Uh, okay. So maybe I turn it off. Yeah. Let me let me try that. So I saw people still join. Uh, we were waiting for two more minutes uh, to start. Maybe let me just reboot. I'll be back soon. Let me try that again. Uh, it, it shouldn't be working this way. Yeah, I need to turn off the Anybody know how to turn off the 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 notification when people join? If you go up to the Zoom and under preferences, yeah, there's a spot for your audio, and it's in there just near the bottom. Automatically join audio when joining a meeting. Okay. Although that might just be for the individual and not for the host. Uh... Okay, so uh, uh, let's start. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, uh, my name is Li Hanying. I'm the president for our product AI. Uh, we just uh, hold the uh, uh, AGN last uh, uh, last um, uh, last um, uh, the Sunday before last Sunday, and we found out uh, like uh, we should have a uh, monthly technical meetup, and uh, and uh, we found like uh, the most lack thing in the community is the, the venue, like we can help each other and can ask questions. 
So that's why we're uh, starting to organize this uh, monthly mentorship, uh, uh, mentorship uh, meet uh, session. And uh, because we have a lot of uh, quite senior member in our association, so I, I kind of quite easily to finding uh, like 10 mentors. And really thank you the mentors join us today. And I will start uh, uh, let learn to introduce uh, 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 one by one. And uh, so the way we will organize today is uh, for the first uh, maybe half an hour, uh, we will have for our mentors to introduce themselves. And uh, all, on their own background and what they are uh, working on and learning on recently on the new AI technologies and also uh, the most important thing is what the uh, most re recommended uh, learning material for beginner, intermediate, and advanced uh, level uh, audience. So I will start with uh, uh, Yuxi. Yuxi, would you mind to introduce yourself and uh, to just spend uh, like about three minutes to introduce uh, the three things uh, I, I'm asking? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so uh, great to meet you, everyone. Um, mm -hmm. I have something really harmful uh, asking mm -hmm. you to come here. Uh, so, yeah, my background is uh, I was a PhD and postdoc at EFA. I'm working on, actually, firstly, networking and then working on uh, machine learning and resource learning. Um, yeah, recently, I'm, I'm trying to do a startup. Yeah, I'm trying to do that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a uh, uh, for me, it's kind of, I, I know it's not very correct. I, I'm trying to apply reinforcement learning to some applications, you know, uh, using a hammer to look for, for news. That's not a correct way, but yeah, I, I spent several years working in that way. Uh, but anyways, I, uh, during that process, I, I did quite some things like I, I wrote a, a deep reinforcement learning overview. Uh, yeah, it, it is well received. Uh, it has more than close to 500 citations. So if you are interested in research learning, I think that's a, a good uh, resource. And I I wrote uh, blogs sometimes on the medium, but it, it, that uh, overview is a good thing. And I organize uh, uh, research learning for real life uh, workshops with uh, some top uh, researchers and practitioners uh, yeah, how to apply reinforcement learning, what kind of applications and what kinds of issues uh, in that. So uh, yeah, there are two workshops already and there are lots of good stuff there. So if you're interested in reinforcement learning, I think that's also good resources. Um, another thing is, uh, is, is currently uh, ongoing is we are, we, are, uh, we are working on a machine learning journal special issue on reinforcement learning. So, but yeah, that one is uh, currently is not is not public. So maybe after probably half a year it will be published. So uh, I think there are some good good papers in that. And yeah, just learning is uh, people probably know that deep learning is uh, is very popular. Is uh, applied to many places like computer vision and like self driving. Uh, just learning is still in some early stage. Some people. Some companies are trying that, for example, for recommendation. And yeah, for sure, people you know AlphaGo and some games. But for some real life applications, uh, I think reinforcement learning uh, recommendation is a is a good uh, field. And there are some good news uh, uh, now and then using reinforcement learning. So that's something interesting. Uh, for the for the um, but you know. Something we are talking about these days, you know, besides deep learning, machine learning, people also talking about AGI, artificial general intelligence. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's kind of a dream for people uh, interested in AI. Uh, I don't think that will be achieved soon. For example, fully autonomous driving, uh, say level three, level five uh, driving, or something like say writing a novel, those kind of things. Uh, but something I think very important for this is uh, causality, logic. So causality kind of got detraction these days. So uh, I think I will 
put some say uh, study material somewhere, maybe in the note or maybe. Yeah, somewhere. in the chat. Maybe. Yeah, in the yeah, chat. Yeah. Please uh, paste uh, some. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe I can difficult. prepare some some say. Uh, 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 in the chat uh, box, posting yeah, some. Well, uh, and maybe go to Li Hang later, and so that's easier. Yeah, I, I, I have some old one, but I just now I check it, I found it's kind of out of date. <laughs> okay. So I, I need to put some new new stuff there. So maybe maybe I, I can, yeah, I can leave some notes, small notes there, but I can prepare a, a more, uh, more uh, maybe more material in, in a file, in a test file uh, later. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, uh, we have uh, quite diverse uh, kind of audience today and in our association. Some of them are like they, uh, they have zero knowledge of AI and uh, some of them are like have zero to one year experience and some of them are from one to three years and some of them are fairly advanced like a PhD student in the field. So uh, if you, uh, uh, I can you, suggest some different uh, level of learning material from people like have no no knowledge at all would you recommend some kind of youtube video yeah. or something like for what's the ai about something like that yeah I, I can uh i think i will i will write some a file i'll prepare a file hmm? a text file okay i put material there but by the way as we these days especially after the uh coronavirus COVID 19 uh, mm. there are there are too many YouTube mm. stuff. So there are there are more than more than enough. Actually. Oh yeah, so yeah. So to, we have to see really, the good ones. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what do we one, are really I think one, 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 so I think one thing I recommend. Yeah. What I recommend is the you know deep learning <laughs> and refer learning summer school. That's actually organized by CIFA, uh Canadian stuff, but you know, that's international expert going to the Deep learning mm -hmm. and refer learning summer school, and they, they gave very good uh, tutorials and talks. Yeah, and, okay. and this year it will be ha happening soon. But you know, this year's uh, last year it was in in Edmonton, and you can go to the website to check. And many of them are on YouTube, and some of them, some of them are the the, uh, the video is on the website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. So, uh, if you don't mind, would you mind to paste like one of the most uh, like useful, like yeah, the most I useful? Something, I put something in the in the in the chat. In the yeah. chat box, like something for the beginner to 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 look uh, right away. Yeah. I put something for uh, deep learning. That's a okay. relatively yeah. new book. I think people say that good one. I didn't read it, but people say it's good. Okay. Yeah. And uh, for people who don't know, uh, Yu Xi is our advisor for our association and uh, it's one of our co-founder for our association. So Yu Xi, it's one of our fairly uh, like, uh, like knowledgeable and senior, uh, senior member and expert, expert level, yeah. So next I will ask, uh, I will ask Yang Ji uh, Yang Ji was our previous uh, VP education, and uh, uh, like uh, from Yang Ji, even myself, I uh, like what Yang Ji recommended me before. It's something really, really useful. Like uh, one thing I really appreciate, like Yang Ji recommended Keras to me when I was uh, starting pick up uh, deep learning stuff, and also other thing. It's like uh, PyTorch. What I heard it's from Yang Ji. So next, I will ask Yang Ji, would you mind uh, uh, to uh, introduce, quickly introduce yourself and uh, to recommend uh, something for the beginner, intermediate and advanced uh, audience? Uh, Yang Ji. Uh, Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yep, uh, we can't hear. Yeah, so I think the, yeah, I just, I just joined, I joined slightly later. So uh, um, I heard some uh, uh, materials from uh, Dr. 
uh, Lee, and I think that's the, uh, uh, actually I attended the summer school last year, and I think it's very informative, uh, um, like a both camp you went. Uh, but if you are, like somehow if you are a total beginner or you barely started your learning, uh, that might be a little bit hard for you uh, because uh, you know there's uh, there 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 are a lot of professors come from the all over the world. There are famous names in the field, uh, but the problem is uh, when they give the presentation, they give the presentation to uh, you know uh, not probably not all all level, not not for the audience uh, in all levels so uh, you better to start with learning some materials from the internet um, and i think there there are more than enough uh, materials uh, on the internet you can search for if you barely started uh, you bet you may want to look into uh, like google they, they, they provide us a uh, ML crash course. Um, I, was, I can send the link later. And so that's Google's uh, ML crash course. And with that course, it gives you the basically the minimum background of the how these things work, and you can get familiar with the terms. Uh, and also, if you want to, like if you are kind of the, the, the business guy, like you don't want to or you don't need to know the very uh, detailed of the technical side. And then you can look into on Coursera, there's a uh, AI for everyone course. And I think that's also produced by uh, Dr. Andrew Wong, uh, the professor from Stanford University. And that is towards all levels audience, especially for the non-tech people. So it's, this can give you this idea of um, how AI or how machine learning works in a high level and most importantly how these uh, technology can affect in our life can build uh, convenient tools or uh, you know, advanced tools in, to help in our day life. So that's the focus of that one. And if you are from a technical side, you want to dive into the uh, technical materials, then um, I would also suggest to start with maybe the Coursera Deep Learning Specialization. That's probably one of the most famous uh, course in the field. And that, yeah, I also saw, I also see the, uh, Dr. Lee sent a link. So that's, a, that's the reinforced learning one. If you are interested in deep learning, go for the deep learning specialization. And if you have already have some idea about deep learning or machine learning and you want to dive into reinforced learning, I think uh, what Dr. Lee just sent is probably the best place to, uh, to check. Uh, and this is, uh, if I remember correctly, this is also from uh, UFA, I think. Uh, the instructors are from UFA, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, I, th I think that's some of my uh, ID, like comments or uh, otherwise on the, on begin to learn. Uh, I'm still learning. Uh, I'm still learning a lot of new things. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think this whole, we, we do have some, ex we do have a lot of experts in different fields. Um, so my primary uh, research field is in computer vision uh, and more specifically uh, on the, on the semantic segmentation and the human behavior analysis. Um, so um, I would say once you complete the most basic stuff like the machine learning or deep learning or even reinforced learning stuff uh, we just suggested, uh, you can probably select one or two fields of your interest. Um, for example, I'm just for example, if you're really uh, interested in uh, building a chatbot, uh, so after the the courses or the materials after you finish those courses and materials, uh, you can start to try to build something. Uh, and there's uh, again more than enough uh, tutorials you can refer to on the internet. Uh, I, I believe most of them are pretty good. Um, you can, I don't, I do not um, have a pointer to them, but uh, with an easy Google search, you can find a lot. Yeah, um, I think it's it's good idea to. You know, first learn some of the serious stuff, the fundamental stuff, then you start to build something, uh, make it in action. And that's, uh, yeah, I think that's a better uh, plan. Okay, so 
uh, actually, I think uh, our audience, some of our members, like even don't have much compute, uh, like uh, computer science background and don't know coding at all. So for this, uh, this group of people, like for the general idea of, of AI thing, do you have some like uh, some really like layman level of stuff to recommend them to like to to watch or to learn? Like starting like really really zero kind of zero coding experience. I am I'm not quite sure, but but I think there's it's 2020, so there's a. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of materials you can refer to if you want to be more technical. Um, like if, if you want to go to a technical uh, path, I would suggest you look into um, like intro level CS course from universities. Like there's a lot of publicly available courses, uh, like from uh, I'll just list a few and like the Harvard, they have a very famous CS50. And also uh, UC Berkeley, they have a uh, uh, CS61A. So from those uh, top universities, they all have their intro level courses publicly available. So you can check that. Uh, but that one is somehow very, uh, you know, it's, it's courses in the university. So uh, they, are, they are taught in that style. And if you're a more practical person, uh, I think you can check a lot of online tutorials. Uh, I cannot refer one uh, at this moment, but I, I believe there's just too many. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, Chi, for uh, your sharing. And uh, so before I ask uh, uh, Chris Chen and uh, Le Yuan to share, I will share my perspective based on what uh, Yu Xi and Chi already talked about. So for really, really like a beginner level, like zero, zero coding experience, I would really recommend Udemy. Uh, Udemy. Udemy. Udemy have for, uh, have really good, like fairly entry level uh, a, a course. And uh, Udemy is actually recommended by one of my friend who is, uh, uh, he's uh, actually it's already like, uh, 50 years old and he's in computer science computer science but uh, he told me he learning a lot of good stuff from udemy whatever new technology udemy have for tons, tons of courses and i really found udemy is better than any other like Coursera place for the entry level people and the good thing about udemy it's uh, all the course it's uh, it's a lot of lot of people learn and it show like how many people taking the course and what's the rating. And usually the course uh, above like uh, 20,000 people uh, already taking and above 6.7 rating or 6, uh, 6 or not 4.6 or 4.7 rating. That course is really good course. and. Uh, it's much, much better than any kind of university course and much, much better in, it's kind of a top, top level kind of course. And in uh, Udemy, you can find in like, uh, uh, like uh, learning data science, learning uh, machine learning, learning whatever topic you like. And uh, for the people with zero coding, uh, coding experience, I recommend a course in Udemy, you can search uh, you can search data science uh, with uh, Tableau, and Tableau is uh, one of the one of the most popular uh, data science or uh, data visualization uh, tool uh, in the field, and uh, there's large demand on uh, using Tableau. So if you search that course, then you're taking that course uh, without even any kind of coding experience. That course should be uh, good for you to start with and uh, you really can start doing stuff and uh, really become useful in your work. Uh, I will try to find it and paste the link in the chat chat box afterward. And next I will ask uh, Kristen to share your perspective. Uh, Kristen is in 
Calbly and Chris it's uh, a Kegel master. So it's uh, uh, like uh, I I haven't met with uh, Chris Chen before, but uh, I already know him for a long time. I hope I can meet him in person soon. So Chris, would you mind to share your uh, your stuff? Yeah, thank you, Nihang. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, everyone. So uh, my camera didn't seem um, to want to work today, so it's blink it keeps blinking. So I just uh, you know so use the uh, the audio. Uh, so yeah, I'm very glad to meet you, uh, meet everyone virtually. And uh, it's funny that so I I um, get known uh, some of you uh, through different channels, like uh, you know. So uh, well, a few years ago when. Uh, um, Yu Xi started a uh, online learning group in Boston, and uh, with a focus on learning, you know, so uh, machine learning and applied predictive modeling. So yeah, I, I, yeah, that's a that's when I got known um, Yu Xi, and I I knew G from uh, participating in computation, and just so you know, uh, Yang Ji is uh, uh, also a Kaggle computation master as well. So we we uh, you know so came across the, each other, and then uh, wow, so you are in Alberta. I didn't know. So <laughs> that's so interesting. Uh, so back to myself. Um, so I I'm, I'm pretty much uh, from my background is uh, pretty much from industrial. And uh, I'm currently working as a senior data scientist at uh, Imperial Ario, where I am helping the organization uh, leverage the techno advanced the techn advanced the analytics uh, to maximize their revenue and their production, as well as uh, minimize uh, risks and uh, costs. Uh, I had a chance to put on my hands on a lot of. Uh, uh, very, very um, interesting and challenging problems there. So yeah, it, it's definitely a great place to, to you know, so to uh, leverage uh, the cutting edge and technology like uh, AI or machine learning. And prior to uh, Imperial Oil, I was working for uh, the Alberta Energy Regulator as a data data scientist. Uh, I helped the organization establish the, their um, scientific data analytic platform and uh, trans transit and help them the transition from on-premise solution to cloud solution. And uh, I also developed. Uh, and develop the and uh, productionize the uh, a few predict modelings, um, such as um, uh, a model predict model that oversees the three hundred thousand kilometers of pipelines in Alberta, and uh, uh, make predictions on the their um, probability of a failure. Uh, so we can combine it with the other information, so like uh, the consequ, like uh, the you know what if a, a pipeline failed, what would be the consequence, and therefore we can come up with a highly listed uh, risk score for every single pipeline in Alberta, and uh, the AER is using uh, this uh, model to prioritize their uh, pipeline inspections uh, um, for the whole province. And uh, yeah, so, and uh, before that, so I, I think I, I had a, 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 yeah, a very diversified uh, working experience, but uh, I, I just stopped there. Uh, so I think one thing partic particularly interesting that might interest you uh, was my experience transitioning from um, an IT professional uh, to a data scientist. Uh, I think I sh I probably share the the same questions that you may have, like you know, so how can I prove I'm uh, eligible or qualified this scientist? So when when I you know get started with uh, self learning and uh, you know the, all of a sudden and the, when I uh, after graduating from the um, college, how can I? Uh, get started. I uh, restarted the, the the learning process and uh, uh, really prove um, uh, prove that so I can do the you know so I can be at the same level as uh, uh, many other great data scientists. Uh, so to that point, so I I think the one thing I have to um, I have to share with uh, I would like to share with you is that so uh, you probably want to to take a look at the. Um, you know, so the uh, take around and find the uh, and find some problems uh, within your domain and which you are familiar with, and trying to think that so 
is that uh, these problems uh, can be resolved uh, by machine learning or uh, you know, so of the advanced uh, uh, analytic techn uh, technologies. And uh, so I did that when I was uh, working at Shaw. So I, I, had, a I had access to uh, many of the data sources. And uh, I, when I get started learning machine learning, I was like, so yeah, maybe I can leverage the uh, technology to, to help the organization to predict which customers are prone to you know, uh, uh, disconnecting their services, right? So I did the model, I developed the model uh, in my spare time. And the one, uh, when the company started their uh, design organization, so yeah, so I, told, I shared the, my story and uh, my model with them and they were super duper uh, impressed. And I think I've seen the same similar stories all over the, uh, world where you know professionals they transition from uh, different discipline and in, uh, to as a scientist and uh, um, yeah I believe they they are doing the same thing right so to to trying to uh, find the um, specific problem and uh, because they are familiar with that and trying to couple the problem with uh, the uh, technologies and uh, in this way they can you know gradually get uh, get on the track and uh, start uh, actually uh, using technology to uh, to uh, solve problems so yeah that's pretty much what i have today okay so would you mind uh, paste uh, some like link to the chat then uh uh, people can use that link to a little bit more specific. To yeah, like sure. I, I, uh, Yangji and Alicia has already shared uh, some great resources. I totally and 100% agree with them. And actually uh, um, participated in some of them, like the uh, deep learning uh, series at the Coursera and mm. uh, yeah, and the Stanford the CSN 231N and the uh, 220. 22.4. And uh, well, recently, I think most recently, I came across uh, a course, uh, free resources provided by Amazon. So it's called Amazon's Machine Learning University. Um, it's uh, offered by the same authors uh, who um, created the, the online lecture, I forgot the name, step by step diving to deep learning. I'm, I, I might be wrong about the name, but they, uh, for that of course they are using uh, MXNet, but this uh, for teaching deep learning. But the, the great thing they did was that, so they, they, they walked you through from the very fundamental things, like you know, how to perform the uh, auto grad and uh, uh, gradually you know, put a, uh, um, develop a more and more sophisticated uh, um, machine learning, uh, deep learning models. And so the same group of authors, they created uh, this course and, and uh, it, was, it has been used internally by Amazon and now they made it uh, uh, available to the public. So, so yeah, so I, I didn't have a chance to take a look at that, but uh, so I, yeah, based on the, you know, so their, their uh, uh, previous history, I would think this could be a great resources too. Okay, yeah, uh, thank you, Chris. And uh, uh, before I let Le Yuan to share, uh, I will share one more thing which uh, Chris just uh, mentioned, the Stanford CS2, uh, uh, 231 course, uh, which course it's more for the intermediate or advanced, uh, uh, advanced uh, uh, course. And I take that course like probably half years ago. I found that course is really, really good. And in that course, it have uh, the thing I learned from that course, it have like let you know everything behind the scene. So it's not just like I using different framework to training a model like that. It's uh, uh, teach you all the uh, behind the scene uh, uh, series and how like computer graphics uh, works, how PyTorch, PyTorch works on uh, all the detail. So I really, and that course, uh, I just went through the slides and all the slides is really, really great. So uh, if you don't uh, went through all the CS231 course or the intermediate or advanced uh, level audience, I, I recommend you take that one. Uh, I, I would recommend like uh, Jin Si or Zhang, you, you're taking that as well. 
Okay, so next, uh, Le Yuan, would you mind uh, uh, sharing your perspective? And Le Yuan is uh, our previous uh, VP education as, uh, as well, and have uh, quite a lot of experience on uh, AI uh, training and education. So, uh, Le Yuan. Yeah, thanks, Li Hong. It's very nice to mm -hmm. see everyone. And uh, good evening. Uh, I'm currently at Toronto, so I've been uh, I've been moving here for a couple of years. I, gra I graduated from uh, U of A, and uh, I still hold this uh, colleague still in Edmonton. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very good sticker. So I've been more on the uh, practicing side for data science and machine learning. Uh, previously, I worked at Deloitte for about uh, 18 months. Uh, now, I recently joined another company called Manulife, uh, still work as a data scientist. Um, after I left like Deloitte, I uh, had some time after work, so I'm currently on the initiative of uh, helping people transit uh, themselves from like a non-technical background into like say machine learning or data scientist. So if you have any interest in that, if you want to know more about like applying different kinds of like algorithms in different kinds of industries, uh, feel free to reach out and I'll be more than happy to talk with uh, uh, any of you individually. So um, I believe like uh, everyone has a very unique background and the data is a, oh, here echo. Oh, so. Okay, uh, I'll get. So yeah, I believe um, because uh, data science kind of requires three major skills. Um, uh, machine learning is one, uh, uh, math and statistics is another one, and then it's uh, computer science. So um, you kind of need to know which part that you, you need to work on. Um, so you just like uh, uh, fill, fill in the gap there. So um, yeah, if you need to know any like say material, if you want to know any material suit for your level, feel free to talk to me. Um, I'd be more than happy to help. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it about myself. Uh, so Lu Yuan, would you mind to uh, share some like uh, your most recommended uh, like a blog or uh, a blog or like learning material tutorial, something like that? Like the most uh, it's, it's hard to say because uh, yeah, there are so many of them. Uh, I think okay. So if you're if you are new to the data science field and uh, uh, you want to learn basic programming and uh, machine learning algorithms, uh, I would recommend another course on Coursera. It's uh, IBM uh, Data Science uh, Certification uh, Specialization, I think. Uh, I think that one is more uh, beginner friendly. Uh, it started with like a basic Python program. Uh, it started with like a, what is a variable, what is a list and what is a loop. Uh, so it's like a, more like a beginner friendly. If you are on an intermediate level, if you have the like computer science skill uh, required, uh, feel free to check out the machine learning course and the deep learning courses from Andrew and G. Uh, those are the ones that helped me get into the field. Uh, I think those are uh, very well made. Uh, for myself, I'm more specialized in a specific field called natural language processing. Um, so uh, if you want to get to know more about that, uh, I think uh, there is a recent specialization on Coursera uh, specialized in uh, NLP, natural language processing. So you can check out that one as well. Okay, okay. yeah, thank you, uh, Lu Yuan. So, uh, yeah, it reminded me one thing I should really, really recommend. It's one YouTube channel, which is uh, uh, Sriracha. Sriracha, it's a YouTube channel, it's really good. And it's just 10 minutes and about some certain topic and it's uh, like a beginner level uh, friendly. I will paste, uh, paste uh, the link in the chat. Uh, uh, in a few minutes. So uh, next, uh, I will ask uh, uh, one of our PhD students in my previous, uh, my uh, research lab, uh, Multimedia Research Center, uh, Chen Qiu Zhao. Would you mind uh, to share what you, uh, what, 
uh, who you are and also uh, like what the new technical thing you are you are working on and the new thing you are learning for like our intermediate or advanced uh, audience uh, hi can you hear me can anyone hear me now uh, a little bit low the voice a little bit low uh how about now yeah it's uh, better yeah it's better um so uh, i'm a third year phd student in motion media lab and many folks on computer vision and uh, video segmentation and currently i'm working on how to make the deep learning network learn uh, the distribution and let me provide some background information um, I think maybe all of you already are familiar with the histogram, the distribution. But uh, when you input a distribution to a conventional neural network, the network will consider this distribution as a vector. Then they compare the two vectors to maybe find a distance function to compute the, the similarity between two histogram then to classify them. But the problem is the histogram is not a vector, it's actually a probability density function. So what we are currently doing is uh, can we, uh, because if you input a vector into the, the network, then you will involve the matrix operation. You will consider this histogram as a matrix and in your, in your layers, there will be another kernel and the kernel is also a matrix and all of them are matrix compression. So what we are trying to do is like if we can use the uh, assemblage distribution operation to replace the matrix operation and uh, in this condition the network will be will be better to do distribution analysis and we compare the our new network with the traditional conventional neural network and the result shows that our network is better. And uh, so for the learning materials, um, most of my knowledge actually come from the context book and the papers. So for the book, uh, I just uh, read one. The, maybe I think all of you already know it. It's named Pattern Recognition and Machine Learning. And uh, for the papers, you can just uh, check these top journals, the top conference. So for the top AI conference, you can maybe the triple AI and uh, IJCIE. And for the top journals, maybe transaction on pattern recognition and machine intelligence. And since I'm working on computer vision, so you can also check the, the CVPR computer vision and pattern recognition and the ICCV and all these top conference. I can share the link uh, here is a website to collect all these top journal and the top conference. Maybe that's it. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Sancho, for sharing the stuff for our intermediate and advanced uh, uh, audience. And next, uh, I will ask uh, uh, Liang Tie. Liang Tie, are you here? Can, can you speak? Oh, I'll ask uh, uh, Yongze. Yongze, can you, uh, can you unmute yourself and you can speak? Uh, Yongze is uh, one of our uh, VP uh, as well, previous VP as well. And Yongze, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, like, uh, it's without a computer science background, but I believe he, he already quite uh, proficient on machine learning stuff by self-learning. So Yongze's uh, experience may be very useful for the people who are not from uh, computer science background. Yongze. Thank you, Leon. Uh, actually, I, my background is quite unique, I, I think. I used to be a junior doctor in China, and then I came here for my PhD learning in medicine. But here, initially, I didn't know uh, anything about machine learning. Uh, I, ju I just doing projects in public health. 
And then I got the opportunity to know like the AlphaGo and those uh, AI uh, things. And I started getting interested in these fields. And uh, at that time I wasn't uh, actually know how to begin to learn the AI. So initially I think I, I just trying to do some hands-on uh, learning and some more intuitive courses. So I firstly, I, t I took uh, some courses on the EDX website. Uh, EDX is also uh, has many open courses. Uh, I here I want to recommend one. Um, it's called uh, Python for data science. And in this course, uh, it has many uh, Jup Jupyter notebooks. Uh, so in this course, I start to learn what the editor is and uh, start to learn a formal uh, programming language. So it, because it provides many like docu documents, Jupyter notebooks, so you can actually uh, go through the uh, lecture the slides and not the slide. Uh, go through the video and also take a look at each line of the code and uh, try to understand the code. So in this process, I start to try different uh, uh, way to manipulate some basic data and get familiar to these fields. So I think this course is. Uh, very helpful for me to uh, get on this field. And, uh, and later on, I start to uh, trying to understand more about AI. So I start to learn a little bit about uh, maths. So I would like to recommend a book by Ian Goodfellow, uh, who developed the GN, uh, it's called deep learning uh, because it's PDF, but I think the PDF version is free online. So you might be able to search it directly, uh, just called deep learning. Uh, one unique feature for in this book is that it has uh, some backgrounds for in terms of the mass. So if you want to know a little bit more about the foundation, I would recommend this book. And yeah, so after that, I start to think about uh, what kind of project I would like to apply the machine learning. So I just uh, basically trying to read the tutorial on the SK, SK Learn. So Psyche Learn. So this is a library in Python, but it has so many uh, machine learning uh, algorithms. And for each algorithm, it has an example. So you can just pick a question and trying to apply all these machine learning methods and uh, read through the tutorial on their website. So in this process, I started to familiar with all kinds of the, those classical machine learning algorithms. Yeah. And then I also uh, took the, the deep learning course by, uh, by Andrew Ng, yeah. Uh, I think it's called deep learning. I can't remember the full name, but, but it's easy to search in in Coursera, although the material is a little bit old, but I think uh, he explained the concepts of uh, AI very intuitively. So I get to learn how the optimization algorithm uh, works as a, a non-professional uh, person, yeah. And then I, I also took the, uh, uh, Deep learning, special like 
session in Coursera as uh, Yangji mentioned. So yeah, I, I would suggest you also starting from some more intuitively uh, coding uh, intensive courses to trying to familiar with at least one uh, pro programming language you can learn through R or Python. Either way would work for you. But uh, if you are more focused on AI, Python, it maybe it's a more appropriate programming language. Yeah. Uh, I, I am right now a, a statistician in Calix surgery. So a lot of my work, it's actually more focused on biostatistics. So that's why I mostly those more advanced or new uh, statistical methods, it's only have package in R. That's why some, uh, there's some difference between these two uh, most popular programming languages. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I want to share. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Yongzhe, for like uh, quite detail and like what's the learning path. I think the learning path is very important, like what's the first step, next step. So that's really good. And uh, so uh, on top of what uh, uh, Yongzhe recommended, uh, I will recommend the two things. Usually like uh, the official tutorial, it's the best place to, like, the quality is really high usually. like. Uh, the official tutorial, like from uh, uh, SKLearn or from PyTorch, whatever thing you want to learn, the official tutorial on their official website is uh, the place to uh, start with. And uh, one thing I want to share with uh, with you and for myself, uh, I recently learning the, the meta learning technique, which is called learning to learn. And with the Meta learning technology, learn uh, uh, the machine can learning how to learning the model. So re that's a really popular technology right now. And uh, if you uh, uh, are interested on this or interested on the most recent uh, popular technology, uh, 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 we can connect. Especially for the meta learning technique, I kind of figure out uh, like uh, uh, most of the details. So. So we can we can exchange ideas uh, on the meta learning technology. So next, uh, 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 I will ask Xinli. Uh, Xinli, uh, would you mind uh, to share like uh, your learning experience as well and uh, kind of your recommended learning material as well? Yes, yeah, Xinli is our VP, our previous VP, yeah, VP as well. Uh, so hello everyone. Uh, it's really nice to see uh, a few uh, familiar uh, faces. So, so my situation is similar as Yongzhe that I don't have a, a computer science background. My uh, primary, my domain knowledge is in environmental science. Uh, get my master in your way uh, and uh, then start working at a research organization and uh, the federal government. Uh, last year, I went back to school to start my second master in computer science with a specialization in multimedia. So um, my case is I normal I learned machine learning and uh, data science mostly by myself and uh, through uh, some uh, university courses. Mm -hmm. And my suggestion, I really like one course is the um, Udemy. I it's gonna send the link is Udemy Python for data science and the machine learning uh, bootcamp. I think I learned that um, uh, last year or two years ago it is a really, uh, it's really good for beginners um, to uh, give you an overview. It's over, similar to uh, what Le Yuan suggested for the uh, IBM Python course for uh, data science. I found this one uh, is pretty detailed and uh, entry level. And uh, for my uh, research uh, focus is I mostly apply um, machine learning, mostly uh, image processing uh, techniques uh, to uh, predict uh, 
for example, precipitation or use machine learning to one project that I'm currently working on is to use machine learning to predict the growth of wildfire uh, because my domain knowledge uh, is in wildfire weather. And for the past uh, three, four years, I've been working on fire weather. Um, and uh, I've found that as a person that is not from a, a computer science background, there are just so many uh, materials online to learn. Uh, I think finding one that is suitable for yourself is uh, really important. Like for today, there are so many uh, great resources. Uh, uh, some are from the entry level, some are more from the more uh, advanced level. So uh, my suggestion is to uh, have a list for all the materials that is suggested by your friends or suggested uh, today by the experts and go uh, look over those materials uh, to see the introduction and to see the list of the course. Find the one that you uh, think should your background the best because uh, I've go into some situations where that I start some courses then I find it's not very suitable for myself and I often just uh, not being super interested to continue on those course and some situations uh, especially when I needed to learn something for my projects uh, uh, that's when I learned the fast uh, and always continue to my online courses and finish them. So if you are a uh, suggestion for a machine learning beginner uh, is that you find something you'd really like to working on and as part of your uh, work or your work projects or something that you're really interested in uh, um, by yourself, then um, find some online courses or trainings that you need to finish those projects and just uh, more uh, more like doing a uh, data engineer and uh, uh, hands-on experience then so far i found that's the best way for me to learn and uh, that is just my two cents for today okay yeah uh, thank you Xingli. i think uh, your last point is really good uh, it's like uh, driven by your practical needs and driven your interest curiosity as well I found uh, like uh, if you're learning without purpose, then your your motivation is much weak. And if you are purely something you want to figure out, then you are much more focused when you are learning or you have some problem you want to solve and you try to use some new te technique to solve, then your learning is much more focused. It's driven by curiosity and um, by stronger motivation. Otherwise, then you feel like I want to learn. But I think the motivation uh, it's very important to help you be focused and uh, select uh, the proper stuff for your learning. It's the, like the difficult level, it's really important as well. But otherwise, it's too easy to waste of your time, too difficult, like make you unhappy, I think. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, so thank you everyone for sharing uh, today for our mentors and uh, 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 I think we don't have, uh, uh, we have too, too many mentors to share in today, so we don't have time to break out uh, long, uh, more like uh, same level kind of sharing today for, for today's session. But uh, we will have a monthly uh, uh, mentor session uh, each month and on the, on the third Tuesday night at the same time, 7 p.m. So for our next uh, uh, sharing session, uh, uh, we will uh, immediately break out uh, into different uh, levels and uh, in different level breakout room uh, will be more uh, focused on for different level kind of discussion and, uh, and, and sharing uh, as well. So, uh, so uh, thank you everyone uh, to, uh, uh, to join and uh, uh, and uh, and especially for our mentor for sharing your uh, uh, your experience. So uh, we can we can leave the we can leave the Zoom open for uh, for half an hour and uh, for the 
for the people who want to stay and they don't have a chance to speak uh, yet, uh, uh, you can speak. I will stay for half an hour more as well. And uh, so we will open the floor to, uh, to anyone who asks uh, questions. And, uh, and if you have other schedule, uh, please feel free to leave as well. So anybody have uh, any questions based on uh, our uh, uh, sharing previous? Yeah, hi. Um, hi, this is Chen Zhu. Um, I, have, I have passed uh, my IBM um, data science um, certificate. I already got that. And then I'm thinking of um, have some projects to, to um, further um, um, get the skills, improve my skills of data science. So um, as mentioned before, I think Christian um, said um, they, she, uh, he got uh, the, he is the uh, Kango competition master. So my question is, is it a good way to join the Kango competitions that will help us to further learning um, during the competition and uh, finally achieve the um, job in data science? Thank you. Uh, this is Chris. So yeah, this is a very good question. Uh, I think it depends. Uh, personally, I've learned, uh, I, I have to confess that I've learned a lot from participating in uh, Kaggle competition, uh, not just uh, from the knowledge acquisition perspective, but also from, you know, so um, a learning ability uh, perspective because you know so, so most of the time so you got uh, two or three months to com accomplish the uh, to compete with the uh, competition and uh, along with uh, um, maybe few sirens and data scientists all over the world and uh, you got to pick up uh, uh, something really really quickly uh, for instance, so if uh, you you saw there's a, a new idea or new algorithm that um, seems to be a good fit for the specific problem, so yeah, you can't just uh, spend a month uh, on you know learning it and uh, actually using it. So you got to to uh, you know so you you can only spend a few days on that, right? So and uh, gradually, so I think so my uh, my learning ability and uh, uh, particularly the, the, the ability to quickly pick up something and uh, yeah, really improve the, through uh, those computation. And for sure, so, you know, so uh, after winning some computations and uh, particularly, you know, so uh, getting the, the computation title, that definitely opened some door. And uh, I, I had an experience, uh, you know, so when, when I was in, in uh, interview so the the interview was uh, very interesting in my experience and we, we just uh, like uh, talked about discuss the details of uh, one of the competition I had before and uh, yeah so there are some um, for sure there will be some um, benefits but uh, essentially I would say I would say you know so it's just a uh, um, it's it's pretty much like a, a learning opportunity, right? So if you spend time, you will get something. And uh, participating on competition is just one of the, the many ways. And uh, uh, it's just you know, for me, I I, I really enjoy the, the competition. But uh, so for uh, focus on, um, again, so depend the focus on they they would have depend uh, depending on their backgrounds and uh, time and uh, resources, so they may choose a different way. So I, I've seen, you know, so the other alternatives also worked before. And yeah, so, but the, so I, yeah, for sure, I, I would uh, highly uh, encourage you to um, join the competition, um, yeah. So uh, I think the, com the Kiko competition is really a good place to uh, accumulate a, like real world kind of project experience. So one problem is like, how can you find in some like teammate? I think the Kigo competition, the teammate is important if you want to really achieve something. Well, um, again, so it depends. So yeah, so I, I did most of my competition uh, solely 
and but so I also participated um, from the teams uh, for sure. Uh, I, I I don't think that they they made a quite a difference. Uh, Kaku is a, a very inclusive community for sure. So you can you will find that the community is super encouraging and uh, willing to share. So yeah, so there are a lot of uh, good resources there. Uh, one thing I I like to mention uh, emphasize is that um, so. Kaggle is different for, don't get me wrong. So Kaggle is great, but the computation is, computations are quite different from real world uh, problems where you probably don't have uh, cleaned up data. And, uh, you know, so you, you, you have, you, you, most of the time, so the, the problems um, uh, you have to deal with is not a very good, very well defined, right? So, and uh, a lot of times, so the very first thing for a data scientist to get started is uh, ask the right question to make sure so we uh, understand the, uh, the problem properly. <laughs> so that's probably most, the, 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 uh, the foremost the challenge and followed by, you know, so can we, where to get the data? How can we make the data available? How can we clean up the data, right? So what is the data quality? And this, um, you know, so, um, uh, some fundamental and practical challenges. And uh, uh, to me, so I spend the most, uh, I would say, um, 85 to 95 of my time on communicating with the business and uh, defining problem, cleaning up the data, and working with the uh, engineering team to, uh, pr trying to productionize a solution. And the, probably I, uh, I, I would spend 5% uh, of the time on modeling, right? So, but everybody's talking about the data science and machine learning, artificial intelligence. So they are talking about the technologies and, uh, you know, model, models. And, uh, uh, but uh, I, I would have, I have to say that's just a small amount of the, the actual works. So be prepared for the messy data, uh, you know, so <laughs> you only define the problems and, uh, you know, so, and uh, um, I would say uh, resistance from the, you know, established uh, uh, engineering teams and so on and so forth. So, yeah, so I, I hate to say that, but that's a real reality. Yeah, I think uh, the reality is much more ugly <laughs> than yeah. like a like, uh, research or academic thing. So that's why uh, I kind of uh, like like the academic world. Academic world, it's like a much cleaner problem to book. So, okay. Okay, so, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, no so uh, anyone else have uh, more questions or have some things to share? Well, actually, I have a question as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm Carolina here. Mm -hmm. And well, um, I will started some weeks ago to work on deep learning. So I'm starting point. But I have a question if someone has experience working with uh, optimization problems, I mean, to solve optimization problems, and uh, the kind of problems in which there is a uh, an objective function that has to be minimized or maximized because up to now all the information or that I found it's related for example to classification to solve classification problems or regression problems but nothing up to now related to optimization problems and uh, if someone has experience in that if there is something related as well with uh, control like a controlling any kind of system and using deep learning for that. So uh, would you mind uh, introduce a little bit of your own background and uh, oh. uh, as well, and also <laughs> like uh, what's the specific control uh, scenario you are, you, are, uh, you are dealing with? Oh, sure. Well, uh, actually I'm a master's student at the University of Alberta. I'm in the electrical and computer engineering department and uh, I'm working with batteries, uh, stationary batteries, for example, for household use, uses. And exactly the, the, the control problem that I'm dealing with, it has to do first of all with the optimization of the usage of the battery, and then with the control of the battery in itself. Okay. okay. Maybe let me say Sorry, uh, I just have a quick question. Do you mean like uh, optimization by large region or like a duality problem, like with constraints? 
Or for example, when we have a battery that is working with a photovoltaic system, and it's to say, okay, if I have a residential uh, case, and I want just to decrease the, the monthly uh, bill of the final user, and how to combine the photovoltaic generation with the storage with the battery, and how to decrease the tariff by consuming the energy in different times during the day, or storing the energy if I'm not using it. That kind of problem. Sounds, so, sounds yeah. like a reinforcement learning problem. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Lee. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I, that's, I think that's useful learning, so you should. And, and you know, our data is very good at useful learning. So you should go to uh, the computer science department, talking with people there. There's a big group, useful learning on uh, artificial intelligence. And you know, AlphaGo is basically has a root in, in Alberta. And your problem is basically her and control is, has very deep uh, relationship with real learning. So go to check real learning. And actually there are, if you search you know, Google Scholar, uh, for example, MPC, uh, probably you know MPC, right? So that's very closely related to real learning. And if you search Google Scholar, you, find some, you can find, find something very close to your problem. Some people using, say, optimal control, but some people nowadays, you know, nowadays refer learning is, is hard. So some people are trying to, to do some refer learning for some control problems, say chemical or battery or something. Yeah, there are, yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. I think a couple of years ago, uh, Google published a paper on using reinforcement learning uh, to control their nuclear electricity supplier or something like that. So they successfully apply the algorithm to save like their billion, like maybe like a billions of dollars uh, a year. So that might be an interesting paper to check out. Uh, okay. But like in general, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, they are, they are doing that for the data center. Uh, yeah, I don't know if- uh, Yeah, you know, data center, what uh, I know from Yishi's recommended uh, like uh, paper, it's uh, yeah, Google using the uh, like reinforcement learning to cooling their data center. Right. Yeah. Okay. But there are there are many, many papers, so many, so many is not. You know, okay. yes, basically I, I started started uh, focusing on reinforcement learning applications. Um, I, I even tried to compile something, you know, applications in 2017 or 18, but nowadays I don't want to do that anymore. There are too many, too many applications. And for your problem, well, uh, you know, maybe we can talk sometime, maybe next time you can, you know, you try to think your problem formulated, you know, for the following you know, for control, you have state, you have action, you have, you have reward and you have object function, those things. You, you, or, or maybe say in, in another way, if you can um, formulate it as a macro decision process or something, right? Then we following or optimal control. Both of them may be working on that. And of control, usually they, they need a model, but reforming doesn't need model. So if you don't have model, then model means transition model or reward model. And uh, if you don't have model, usually we don't have model. We, we don't have accurate model. So reforming can maybe work on that. If you have enough data or you have, if you have a simulation. <laughs> yeah, there are lots of, uh, but probably you, you formulate your problem first and we can have more discussion. Uh, but since you are in Alberta, I, I recommend you, you know, but yeah, nowadays I don't know, since university is closed. So we find some way, say virtually or, um, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, <coughs> we will have a follow up email to everyone and to, uh, to uh, listing out our mentors and also uh, uh, I'm thinking we will create a wiki page and to, to co-edit the learning material uh, together with our mentors and uh, with our, our attendees. So then, then we can uh, slowly to accumulate uh, the best uh, uh, resource uh, among us. So uh, anybody else have uh, questions or something to share in further?
So uh, I saw uh, Alamus is here as well. Uh, Musa, uh, can you, uh, it's convenient for you to speak? Or I want to, <laughs> to see you and check with you, like how are you going in, in Seattle? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Uh, like I saw you shared the post about this uh, mentor process, mm. like for last year and a half, I wasn't actually looking in depth in AI. But now, since I'm, I'm kind of used to my work, so I think I now have a bit more time to start uh, relooking to the AI section. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, I'm wondering, like uh, in Microsoft, uh, uh, like which team are you in, and what kind of uh, problem you are working on? Oh, like uh, I'm in Amazon. So, oh, in Amazon, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I'm at the payment team. So we are dealing with the payment process for Brazil market. So right now, uh, I guess one thing is in Amazon, everyone is moving to the native AWS. So the regular AWS. Before they were doing something different. So that's something I've been learning right now. The other thing is the payment. So not too much AI involved actually. <laughs> It's just a standard software. It's engine. just uh, like software engineering? Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. I have uh, maybe, I don't know, a question or something. Uh, you know, nowadays, for the, say, for the education and people trying to do AI for education, and uh, say, uh, if you have some experience, or if you don't, maybe uh, if you have experience, say, using some games to learn say AI or something, or if you are thinking maybe for you or for your kid or some, some people, uh, you, what do you think? Do you think the games will help or what, what do you expect from the games? Do, do you know what I mean? I mean, you know, Alberta is good at games and some people are trying to create games maybe for learning something. And nowadays there are some say startups, they are, they are trying to, create some games for maybe for kids to learn mathematics or even or, or programming, say Python programming or even for AI. So what do you think? Do we have some experience or what do you expect if there, there are some games for learning AI? AI games for learning AI. <laughs> yeah, actually, oh, oh. oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, open any question. There, are, yeah, it's a maybe just a brainstorming, some kind of brainstorming. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I will share what uh, uh, we have done before in our uh, multimedia research uh, center. Like uh, it's already ten or fifteen years ago. It's at that time uh, less uh, Edmonton based. Uh, like a K-12 education company and they are fairly successful. It's called Rocky Mountain Education Group, something like that, or Castle Rock. And uh, they basically partner with my PhD supervisor and they giving quite a lot of money, research funding for, for this kind of problem using game for education. And uh, so, it try to using multimedia for for the gaming and try to helping the kids to learning like a physics uh, concept uh, like that. And uh, personally, I really interested on the education uh, education problem because uh, like my own kids have uh, uh, these needs, and I found the most uh, uh, useful thing will be. Just like uh, the TikTok thing, it's very popular and uh, people are very dictated on TikTok and there's also quite feel like uh, learning, uh, like uh, educational based uh, TikTok videos, right? Like teach you some tricks, something like that. So, and also for the education side, the personalized education probably is the most uh, useful thing in my opinion, like uh, to providing you the right like right difficult level of things for you to learn for next step. Because uh, I feel like uh, when I try to learn something, uh, probably 80 or even 90% of my time is trying to finding the right material to, to start. And if I finding the right material, then I can spend just 10% of my time to pick up a new, uh, a new concept. So, uh, 
uh, to summarize is try to like uh, break down the, the knowledge into a uh, small chunks like uh, and like a uh, 10 five ten minutes uh, short video or like uh, like a uh, five or ten minutes reading kind of thing and then blocking that knowledge then I can pick up one block and then it recommend me to next block and then I automatically pick up the next next block then it's kind of AI guiding me through to learning certain certain thing like personalized way. Yeah, how, how about that company? Is that getting IPO or something? Oh, well, that company they already very successful by itself. And what they do is uh, they providing like uh, the uh, supplementary supplementary uh, learning books. It's just like uh, if you have kids, you must know like uh, code school practice books. So their company is providing like code school like uh, practice practice book for for like uh, grade three math, grade four math, or grade three uh, grammar, or uh, grade three uh, science. So, uh, and uh, I, that practice book is really important, but uh, the book is, uh, I have one book for everyone, right? So, uh, uh, so it's not personalized, that's what I found. Uh, it will be uh, useful because sometimes uh, the kids already know like certain concepts very well then you should uh, don't waste their time on the, the stuff they already know and of all the stuff they really struggling then you probably need to provide more practice instead of one size for everyone right if i need more practice right now the coast book uh, that's it. You have ten practice for this problem. If you finish, then you finish. So if you don't want to practice more, then you need to find him another book from another company. Yeah. Actually, I have a couple uh, thoughts for Dr. Lee's idea. So I think one thing might be interesting is to figure out uh, what kind of like competition you're getting involved with. By that I mean, when you develop a game that is like AI in power, but the, the objective is to teach, uh, to teach kids some knowledge, are you taking their like gaming time or are you taking their like textbook reading time, right? So if you're like, uh, if you're taking their like, sh like gaming time, if they have to give up the shooting games or the, the mobile games that they love and to play this game, they probably don't want to. But if you can kind of like design and uh, make your game uh, to be so educational and their parents allow them to, uh, to do this instead of like a reading textbook, I think it would be a great success. Okay, yeah. So any other topic uh, uh, we can discuss? So anybody like uh, learning the meta learning stuff recently or have some knowledge about meta learning? Yeah, uh, meta learning is another, uh, another new thing uh, you should look into if you are in the advanced level. So uh, it uh, try to resolve the problem like uh, you have very limited uh, sample to learning flow. Uh, so uh, with the meta learning technology, it's something like uh, uh, if you learn uh, like to recognize a cat or a dog, then uh, with the meta learning technology, then uh, you you probably just need one or two sample. You can recognize something a new animal, which is not a dog or or cat. It's a new uh, category, and so and it probably you just have one or two samples and see this is uh, this is a bird. Then then it will automatically learn the model to learning a bird. So that's the concept of uh, meta learning, it's learning to learn. So the model is kind of 
learn, try to figure out how the model learn to recognize cat and, and the dog and learn using that, uh, learn the model, try to quickly learning a new model called, it's called it's a bird. So uh, you should really look into, uh, into the, the meta learning thing if you, uh, if you are in the advanced level. And that technology becomes very popular in the in the like, top tier uh, computer vision uh, conference. There's many uh, related work. Uh, so, uh, Chen Qiu, Chen Qiu, are you still here? Oh, by the way, I put that uh, paper title about uh, data center cooling for Carolina. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Chen Qiu, are you still here? I, I, uh, if you are available, I. I try to understand a little bit deeper your work. Okay, uh, that's fine. Okay. So, Kelvin, Kelvin, are you uh, available to speak? Sure, what do you need? Uh, yeah, sharing a little bit about, about uh, what you are doing, like the chatbot stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, name's Calvin. I own an insurance brokerage firm, but I uh, started off my career as a computer science. It's part of my passions to build certain things based on AI, because uh, when I was in university, AI was virtually non existent So the only thing we, were, we learned in the university was back with um, what do we have? We have uh, um, all kind of uh, yeah, object oriented, that kind of things itself, which is really ancient to you guys. And I remember my years of university, I have about these stacks of punch card fit into the IBM machines, mm. and it was written and coded. So if you're interested, I can show you a screen share of what we do here right now. Okay, yeah, great. A second here. Yeah, Kelvin, it's uh, have a really interesting background. Kelvin, it's uh, started as a, a developer, software developer, and then have his own insurance company. And I, uh, when I met with Kelvin, I was really amazed by he spent a lot. Although he's have like his own company, like selling like. Uh, like 30 or 50 people, but he is still devote like majority of his own time to developing software for his own company. So really passionate about the, the software thing. And he developed a chatbot for his own insurance company and win a lot of, uh, a lot of innovation award for the insurance industry. Okay, everybody uh, see that? Uh, uh, Calvin to share what he's doing. Do you see this? Yes, yeah, we can see it. So this is our company's uh, Facebook. So it's one of the things that we actually built. Okay, we have this chat box. So you can get started and say, why? Okay, um, why is my insurance so expensive? So it's gonna ask you for telephone number, they look into it. It's part of the uh, integrations to our CRM. Um, so you can do, can I get a uh, for, for insurance? So they are asking for a cell phone for identification, but this is only part of that um, on the Facebook because this is more into towards uh, getting the general. So what we have here is part of the chatbot that responds almost like immediately. I have wrote another chatbot. This is based on our Facebook, I mean, on our website. So you can see over here, you can say, hey, how can I do? Um, can you tell me about warranty program? Uh, was it warranty? Yeah. 
is discovered in Mexico. Okay, so it's getting stupid now. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. It's part of the uh, natural language processing. Um, can I cover um, equipment? So every day it's, uh, yeah, it's getting stupid right now. <laughs> Um, it's part of the processing that keep learning by itself and then we will guide them and tell them the response is correct or it is wrong. So every day, based on the response, we have this uh, connected to the telephone. The phone itself will keep answering based on whatever we study. So it's part of our integrations together. And this is part of, uh, we utilize the, uh, the uh, NLP process from Google as well. So it uh, it's works on with the, uh, Facebook, Slack, um, integrations with a, with a website and uh, stuff like that. So that's more here towards, and uh, another thing that we use is the uh, machine learning capability. Uh, we scan our customer, we look into the data of what we have and uh, identify whether this is gonna be profitable or not. And then the whole thing itself is integrated to our telephony system, compromising a, what we call a unifying messaging program. So, yeah, that's all I have here to share. <laughs> yeah, so by the way, Kelvin is our new VP uh, marketing. And uh, uh, so Kel Kelvin will very actively like involved in our uh, sessions. And okay. Hey, Kelvin, uh, yes. is that dialogue flow? Uh, we use a couple of things there. Includes dialogue flow, we include uh, um, we actually use TensorFlow for quite other things. Um, it's, it's a combination. The, the, the most difficult part of the uh, machine learning and uh, NLP is all about how you put all those things together. The integrations is the toughest part. Um, we even test it on, on our Google. Say, for example, hey, Google, talk to insurance advisor helper. Getting the test version of insurance advice. So you can do the same thing if you have Google. I need to answer your questions about insurance. Feel free to ask about property insurance related questions and I will try my best to answer it for you. You hear that? Can everybody hear that just now? So uh, yes, we, we can't hear. Yeah. Loud and clear. Depends on various factors. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's, our, it's our Google Mini. Hey Google, cancel. So this has been published throughout the whole world. So you, all you can do is just, if you have a Google Mini, you can use this. I'm gonna type in the e command. So all you need to do is just talk to insurance advisor helper and uh, no matter where you are throughout the world, the message itself will triggers and then it integrates to our systems and play the game. Okay. That's pretty cool. I was going to ask, how was the deployment like uh, experience? Was that like pretty smooth oh. or there are lots of pitfalls? Hell, hell, it's only three, three, three weeks to deal with Google's and uh, the, the whole team. It's, it's, it's not easy. Trust me, it's not easy. And they are very peculiar and there's, oh. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, we were yeah. doing something similar, but then, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, we, we, I did some research, but then didn't, didn't implement the application. So it's yeah. nice to see that you have it work and that deployed on the website. Good work yeah. yeah, you have it on the website, you have it on Facebook, you have it on the uh, Google Mini, and it's just, just very peculiar, and there's a lot of rules, regulations you have to follow. Like on Facebook itself, it kind of a, a, a little relaxed, allowing us to ask the, uh, the privacy information, and then it integrates to our CRM system to pull out data. So you can call and say, hey, I want my, uh, my pain slips. I want my uh, insurance cover notes. So that, they allows us to do that because it's kind of an integrate partially. It's not open to the public, but it's actually going through us. But uh, I don't know, I hope they don't find out one day. <laughs> Otherwise, they're gonna actually meet all this uh, privacy regulations. And then, oh gosh, I've been grilled by them so many times because the Canadian regulations and stuff doesn't allow us to integrate the US and uh, the privacy law and trust me, it's hell. <laughs> yeah, glad that you figured everything out. 
Thanks yep. for sharing. Yep, we got it done. And uh, do you find some good uh, like uh, machine learning developer for for your company, or you do it all the things by, by yourself? Um, I have a whole group right now, so a team, and we even um, for some of that we use Firebase and uh, the webhook programming part itself. It, 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 it's a combination. There's so many different languages we use right now. It's uh, it's very overwhelming. But uh, yep. We want to so know what for that. How many developers do you have right now? Um, we use the NLP expert in uh, one of the guys in Pakistan. Okay. He actually helped us into uh, designing the more human-like. It's the it's a NLP kind of things itself. So the, the 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 language part, understanding what human will ask. So that's one thing. It's nothing to do with programming, but the human nature, the language, the structure. And then we have another team of uh, programmers in India to help us into the, uh, um, we use webhook, so it's part of PHP programming as well. And uh, I've got a few more guys from Bangladesh. And uh, so it's, it's an integration of everything. And uh, you just need a, a, a guy, we have a guy full time managing all this for us. Otherwise, uh. <laughs> Okay, and uh, did you find the uh, listing by yourself or you have a few other people funding the thing together? Or did you raise some funding? Sorry, binding or? No, oh, funding, funding. Like funding. Yeah. Uh, it's from my insurance company. So you're funding like yeah. by yourself, okay. Yeah, it's uh, very expensive. But uh, hopefully we, uh, we started off another insure tech startup. Hopefully okay. we can convince some other computer or uh, some other insurance company to join force with us and uh, we get some money out of that because uh, that's, that's a lot of integrations, like telephony, we use us, uh, quite a fair bit of open source and uh, the integrations and, well, the integrations is tricky. So, yeah, we are hoping, we got a few letter of intent and then once we publish, package the whole thing, we will get a yeah, venture capital from uh, out of VC investor. So, uh, that's a lot going on. <laughs> and I'm busy preparing my, uh, my uh, business plan, the forecast, and all those, and I've been challenged every day by those VC. Trust me, it's no fun. <laughs> I've been really. <laughs> so on the practical side, uh, like uh, the the chatbot thing, it's it's really helping your business, or it's still like net investment? Is any like uh, really resolving your like uh, your practical chat? pain point in your insurance company or it's like it's kind of a toy or it's a real useful stuff it's been deployed the problem here is in the world of a, I, I used to call this a digital transformation mm. so this is the world of digital transformations and there's two part of this you have the technology side you have the people train and learn and then you have the uh, the uh, the business side and the most we found is the, uh, the rejection from the business. So even for uh, my own insurance brokerage firm, we have an operation manager who resists and fight with me every day and fight and fight and fight. Because it's like, why would you use this? Because it's a waste of time training people and they're not gonna use it. I say, look, efficiency is one thing. If you're looking at digital transformations for efficiency, you need to look into the uh, the customer experience because at the end of the day itself it's up to the customer who use it and if they like it but uh yeah it, it's kind of tough because when i ask for resources then there's like no nope, i'm gonna run my business this old way and the new way will not help because there's so much issue here so yeah it's a constant struggle like every business like consider my own insurance brokerage i have to fight with the operation manager every day if you try to sell this to a new business, it's even tougher. So digital transformations is not for the weak heart, I can tell you. It's mm -hmm. not for the weak heart. It's not easy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you, for Calvin, for sharing uh, the good stuff you are doing. Okay. And I'm still in the office now, so okay. about time. <laughs> okay, so we have for like 8.40 now. I think we, uh, we can conclude our session today. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we will have a follow-up email to try to organize the thing we share today. And also 
uh, we will try to build out, I think we, uh, we should have uh, uh, our product AI wiki, wiki page and try to, try to uh, collectively, uh, collectively accumulate the knowledge which our product AI are contributing to our members and to the world as well. Okay, so thank you everyone to join the session today and uh, we will uh, follow up the email and uh, see you next month. Thank you. Thank you.